So uh, my third film, as usual, is uh, less um, theoretical, uh, less uh, abstract, uh, and less uh, focused on close reading of uh, texts uh, written by others, by is an invitation to use what we learn from others to our own uh, reflection on the topic. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, relationship between uh, philosophy and religion, or put it uh, in uh, other words, me and the philosophy of religion. Um, so, um, again, I would like to invite you to reflect um, on, your, uh, on your own way to consider uh, this relationship between uh, philosophy and religion. And uh, in order to facilitate it or to make it uh, easier for you, uh, because perhaps uh, you never did it before, although most of you, as I uh, can imagine uh, as through uh, catechesis or religion in, in, in elementary school, in, in middle um, in, in Lyceum or where, uh, which, uh, whatever of schools uh, you attend, uh, religion was there present, but uh, it was present perhaps in different way as a number of, I don't know, uh, doctrines, names, uh, history, but uh, I suppose, perhaps I'm wrong, but uh, I remember my own education, it was like uh, amount of, of uh, knowledge, abstract, detached from me. Uh, rarely we were invited in, in, in 60s or 70s to, to relate uh, uh, our own uh, life experience to what others said about, uh, about religion. Uh, so um, I will uh, Okay, I'm older than you, my life story is longer, uh, and I can uh, tell you, uh, of course, uh, many anecdotes uh, from um, my life, how my own perception of um, religion and re uh, relationship between religion and philosophy, religion and literature, religion and uh, science, how it developed, uh, how it changed during uh, the time, etc., etc. But perhaps this is not uh, the most uh, relevant now. Mm, I will mm, share with you um, my recent uh, discovery, uh, namely um, one uh, author who is a German uh, theologian, and uh, who since uh, 40 years perhaps is uh, writing about religion as uh, William Desmond, whom I mentioned in previous film, but he's the professional um, theologian. Desmond is a philosopher, so he's writing from philosophical point of view of religion. And here we have uh, in case of this uh, theologian about whom I will tell you in the second uh, few words uh, more is similar to Abraham Joshua Heschel, so the hero of my first film. Uh, he was a rabbi, uh, as you remember. He was uh, also a social activist. Actually, I forgot to, to mention it, but he was working with our, uh, Martin Luther King. Uh, he was involved in, in uh, fighting against racism, ag against the uh, Vietnam War. So it, it was not uh, a religion detached from, from daily life, the opposite. He was very much involved and was uh, considered as a, as a public figure, as a public intellectual. So the, the same, uh, I can say that um, Harry S uh, Schmidt Leukel, this is his name, um, uh, he is uh, basically a theologian interested in um, religious pluralism. 
so in a way we can see in him although he's a christian uh, theologian he was catholic but uh, because of some difficulties with uh, with the catholic hierarchy he left uh, catholic church and now is a represented uh, representing the protestant uh, churches or reform tradition which is uh, less bound uh, by tradition, but more um, uh, focused on uh, developing new ideas. So he's a very creative uh, mind, and you will see in, in a few minutes why I uh, considered him as worthy to, to, to study him, to read about him, or to read his texts. And in fact, uh, you will find uh, on the platform the third essay, uh, exactly by um, Perry uh, Smith Leukel, uh, which is an introductory chapter to a book uh, dedicated entirely to his new theory. And this theory uh, seems to me is um, exciting is extremely interesting for those who are uh, interested in, in pure science, in mathematics or physics or uh, biology uh, or, or chemistry. So all this uh, field of human activity, which hardly uh, you connect with religion. But in case uh, of, of this author, uh, which is really worth it to, to study, you, you, we have an example of mutual um, creative uh, um, uh, influence or even a kind of osmosis between uh, mathematics and, and uh, theology. So five years ago, so it's quite recent, uh, he was uh, Perry uh, Smith uh, Leukel, uh, was preparing uh, uh, lectures for um, Keyford, Gford lectures in Glasgow, a very prestigious place where uh, people are invited from entire world, for example, uh, James um, William James, a uh, very important American author at the beginning of 20th century, was invited to, to deliver a lecture on his uh, book, uh, after it became book, uh, uh, Variety of Religious Ex Experience, and we'll discuss this uh, in, in January. But in his case, uh, he was preparing exactly a, a, a series of lectures dedicated to um, religious pluralism. And uh, in the text which uh, you, you have and you can read, he's describing a, a kind of uh, theological or existential revelation. Uh, as in case of Flannery O'Connor, we, we see an, a kind of revelation to the main character, Miss Turpin. And here we have a different kind of, of, of revelation. So he was, you know, preparing, thinking, as is a typical experience for everybody. I mean, you preparing your exams, you are all the time thinking about uh, the topic, I don't know, history of literature, poetry, films. So you, you try to memorize a lot of material. So, uh, also a professor writing a book is <laughs> also under stress, right, to, to give a good lecture, well-informed, and so on. So, he was, you know, thinking about and wake up in the night at three in the morning and uh, wake up, went to his desk and read um, wrote down two pages of a new way of approaching uh, religious uh, pluralism, the variety of religious, uh, uh, of different kind of religions which we see around us. And he called it fractal interpretation of religious diversity. I'll repeat, fractal 
interpretation of religious diversity and fractals. What it's what it is. And you can imagine this coming from uh, mathematics, from Benoit Mendelbrot, again a Polish Jew born in the 20s, I think, uh, in Warsaw, who immigrated as a young uh, child to France, and he became a mathematician, uh, also active in America. So you can read about him easily uh, in internet. And in the 70s, uh, Benoit Mendelbrot, this mathematician, invented an, a model of um, uh, uh, describe elements uh, of a bigger unity which are similar. So it's a very tricky situation that you have a model and elements are similar to one another and the entire structure um, demonstrating uh, uh, special features. And you can find these fractals, fractale in Polish, also in nature, also in, uh, I don't know, for example, in Norway, fjords have a, a fractal structure. Everywhere you have, uh, you can find uh, plants uh, shaped in the same way, some leaves, uh, really everywhere you, you can find, uh, once you have this concept or you have this, this term, uh, you can uh, see uh, examples uh, everywhere in the nature. And coming back to religion, if you are looking for a good uh, model, how to explain the variety of religion, suddenly you see that they are different. If you compare Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism, just to mention the most uh, important, you see that they are different, but in the same time, they have common elements. For, the, for example, looking for an answer, how it happened that we are, uh, we are created, or how come that we are living uh, with other people and how to um, relate uh, to another human being, etc., etc. How to reach uh, uh, divine, etc. So uh, this fractal interpretation is helping us to have this optimistic uh, vision of the variety of religions. And if you will read him, and I hope that you will be inspired also for your own research as, as I was, and I will go even uh, one step further, and I would say not a fractal interpretation of the variety of, um, uh, of religion, but a religion or religions as such have a fractal structure. They are complementary with one another. One aspect which is present uh, very strongly in Buddhism, this uh, inner uh, concentration, meditation, this peaceful attitude toward the world. It's almost we are identifying this uh, meditative aspect with Buddhism. But we have meditation in all religions also right or if you take christianity for example protestant uh, christianity you see that critical approach to your own tradition is very important but we have this similar they mention even in catholicism there are many catholics who are critical toward their own tradition in judaism the same so you have different judaisms a lot of them because the people have different approach to their own tradition, etc., etc. So to conclude, I would say that uh, philosophy of religion is a certain audacity, courage to articulate your own ideas starting from your own life. So the better way to philosophizing is exactly having 
to have courage to question what the other told you before.